Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. This is Brad Being Chill. Today I want to talk about whether or not you should buy an Apple Silicon Mac and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before you purchase one or if you want to go ahead and get an Intel Mac right now, I'll tell you if you should do that or not. Now before we get into that, I do want to ask if you're not already to please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week, Monday through Friday, so if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and click that bell and you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. Now let's get into it. So as some of you may already know, there is supposed to be an Apple Silicon event happening on November 17th, according to leaks and tweets from John Prosser. So you make sure you do your research beforehand so you don't fall into a trap and become an early adopter of something you maybe weren't prepared for. Now what started this all was back on June 22nd of this year, Apple announced that they would begin having Apple Silicon chips and all of their devices over the next two years in a transition period, meaning they're still gonna be releasing Intel Macs, but they are gonna start slowly phasing them out incrementally and release some Macs with the new Apple Silicon chips inside of them. Now to kick everything off, they created a universal quick start program for developers where they can pay $500 and get access to a developer Mac Mini with the A12Z Apple Silicon chip inside of it. And this is gonna give them time to develop their apps and ensure that it works across all of the platforms simultaneously and that they can work out as many kinks as possible in order to get ready for the upcoming release of these Apple Silicon Macs so that there aren't any software issues, which Apple also doesn't want to happen, as frustrated users will likely target Apple as well as targeting the software companies themselves. Now, this is really a great thing for Apple to start doing, even though it's not gonna happen right away and it will rely on the developers to do most of the work. We are gonna see a lot of new apps come in to try to take up some money that people are gonna be wanting to spend whenever their apps don't work natively on these new ARM architecture chips. And so a lot of new apps are gonna be flooding the market. And since they all share a single code base, they're gonna function across all devices, whether it's your iPad, your iPhone, or your MacBook, or your Mac, your iMac, or your Apple TV. Any Apple device is gonna be able to share the same code base. And that's gonna allow them to develop more full functioned apps for the mobile platform. Like a good example would be the Adobe Suite, which does exist on mobile devices. However, a lot of people would agree it's definitely not as good as their desktop counterparts for obvious reasons. However, now with this new ARM architecture and the shared code base, Adobe is gonna be able to have a more fully fleshed out app on your mobile devices because it's gonna share the same code base and they're gonna have the monetary incentive to make their iPhone apps better because they'll be making their desktop apps better at the same time and they rely on customer satisfaction to make all their money. So the most exciting part about this whole thing is in the future Apple is saying that you're gonna be able to work on your laptop for as long as you want and then whenever you're done you're gonna close it and you're gonna be able to pick up your iPad or your iPhone or whatever device you want to and immediately pick up right where you left off similar to how it works with like Google Drive when you're sharing documents on the cloud. However, this is gonna be for most applications on your devices and I think it's gonna be a lot more revolutionary than people may realize at the beginning. However, I do wanna point out that the ball will be in the developer's court for most of this stuff. As long as the software is not immediately made by Apple, it will be up to the companies and developers to spend the money to make these apps work as well as they should on these devices. And Apple will make it as easy as possible with their developer toolkits. However, developers are gonna to have to spend the time to make sure it works as seamlessly as Apple is promising that it can be. So of course not all apps are gonna work natively on this ARM architecture on day one of the release of these new Macs. However, Apple is offering you Rosetta 2, which is a binary translation environment, which is gonna allow you to run x86 and x64 architecture applications on these new Macs, and it's gonna translate them to the ARM architecture. Now, it is going to likely lag and have some slowdowns and some bugs, but I imagine it's gonna work pretty good if Apple is putting all their eggs in one basket here and hoping that Apple Silicon is gonna be the next big thing. They're really gonna make sure Rosetta 2 works as well as possible. Otherwise, it'll give people a bad image of the new Apple Silicon chips, which they do not want at all. Now, Apple has stated that Rosetta 2 is merely a temporary thing where they are going to allow users to use it while the developers transition their apps into the new ARM-based architecture. However, they said it is not a substitute for making a native application and that you should start transitioning as soon as possible as it won't be around forever. Now, given that they are still planning to release Intel Macs this year and likely next year, we can hope to see Rosetta 2 is gonna stay around for probably the next three to five years. 
And that would make sense because Apple is going to want to make sure the people that buy the new MacBooks aren't dissuaded from purchasing an Intel chip with Apple Silicon looming on the horizon. Also, for what it's worth, users that plan on running Windows 10 on boot camp on these devices, there's a good chance that's not going to be possible unless you plan on running the Windows 10 ARM version, which also doesn't have support for many applications. And likely, if you're dual booting Windows anyway, you're probably going to want the full-fledged x86 version of Windows instead of the ARM version anyways. So if you really need to dual boot Windows, definitely don't be an early adopter of these new Apple Silicon Macs because that's likely not going to be available for some time. And if it is available right away, it's probably going to be very buggy or have a lot of features that are missing from your traditional Windows 10 experience. So with all that being said, what are some of the benefits now that I've talked about most of the downsides of Apple Silicon? Well, for starters, these new chips are going to be way more efficient and offer a higher performance per watt ratio than chips that we have in current MacBooks. And this is going to allow you to have a more efficient MacBook that has less battery power consumption, which is going to allow them to either include a smaller battery in the device to keep the battery life about the same as what it is, or include the same battery to give you more battery life than what you have today. But if they do decide to cut the battery, they are going to have more room to add other hardware or they could just leave it out and make the device even thinner and lighter than it is now, which I know is appealing for some people, especially people that are going to be buying into the MacBook Air, which is likely to be one of the first Macs with Apple Silicon inside of them that is going to be released likely around November 17th of this year. I imagine the non-pro devices are going to be the first devices released with these Apple Silicon chips mainly because the users buying those devices likely aren't using too many applications that won't be supported by the ARM architecture, and they won't be negatively impacted by the use of Rosetta 2 as much as a user who buys a pro device. Now, as these early adopters start to buy these non-pro devices, they're gonna begin increasing the market share of people that own these ARM-based Macs, and that's gonna make developers and companies more financially motivated to develop apps and push out all these great new features for these devices that Apple has been promising. However, it's not going to happen right away, and I imagine in about two to three years from the release date of the first Apple Silicon Mac, we're going to start to see you know, the benefits really start to take place. However, I don't think if you buy it right day one and you open the MacBook and you expect to have all these great new features and things, you're likely going to be disappointed as it's going to be a very similar experience to what you have with the current MacBooks that are out today. So as I mentioned earlier, Apple is still going to be releasing Intel-based Macs over the next two years until the end of their transition period. And if you're worried about buying a new Intel Mac, if you don't want to wait for the silicone-based MacBook Pros, or if you already have an Intel Mac and you're worried about upgrading, I wouldn't worry too much as these devices are not going to instantly become worthless when the Apple Silicon Macs come out as the x86 and x64 based architecture applications are still going to be out there in full force because the majority of the market share either uses Windows or some other platform that uses that architecture and there's just too much money in it for these companies to just abandon them altogether. So I'd say for at least the next five to 10 years, your Intel-based MacBook is still gonna be able to function just like it does today. And you might just miss out on a couple of the cool features like being able to instantly swap between applications on your phone and your laptop and things like that. Now, Apple is going to be the catalyst here, moving a lot of companies over to this ARM architecture, but rest assured, even though they will be moving and prioritizing that for a short time, they will not be stopping the support for their older applications, and they will keep it up for definitely the life of your MacBook at the very least. In fact, I've already seen a couple developers online saying that they plan on buying the last generation of the beefiest Intel MacBook Pro that they can, likely because they have a tech stack that can only be run on Windows like C Sharp or .NET, and they don't want to have to worry about transitioning into an ARM period, especially if they need to do that stuff for work, but they don't want to move over to a Windows machine because they really like the Mac ecosystem. So I think that these Intel Macs have a potential to even be worth more to certain people in the future if you plan on reselling them to buy a new silicone-based MacBook Pro. However, if you do plan on being an early adapter of the Apple Silicon Max, you can rest assured knowing you're likely going to see increased performance, better battery efficiency, a slimmer, sleeker, lighter form factor, lowered cost, a better Apple ecosystem in the future, and much, much more. However, this is going to come at the cost of having to use Rosetta 2 to support older applications that haven't transitioned over ARM completely, and that could be a little laggy or buggy depending on what software you choose to use. 
However, I do want to point out that the software the majority of people are going to be using on these devices, since most people buy Apple devices to do creative things with them in the Adobe suite. Adobe is going full steam ahead on these ARM-based Macs, and Apple has been working very closely with them to ensure that all of their products are going to be up and ready likely as soon as these devices hit the market as Adobe is a big selling point for a lot of people and they really like using those softwares on MacBooks themselves as opposed to Windows machines. Either way, you can't go wrong here and I believe a lot of people always want the latest and greatest newest technology and I cannot blame them for that at all. And I think that a lot of people are gonna be very happy with the new Apple Silicon Macs and Apple really believes in it themselves, which is a good sign because they're pushing it so hard and they truly believe that it's gonna be the future of the Apple ecosystem. Now, I also believe that Apple has the power to move a market entirely, and we're about to see that happen when we watch all these companies scramble to get their applications over to the ARM architecture as fast as possible to take advantage of all that money people are gonna to wanna to spend to fill up their new expensive computer with all kinds of software that isn't available at this time. Now that's all I've got for today's video. If you guys liked that and you learned a little bit, make sure you smash that like button and let me know down in the comments whether or not you think that these new Apple Silicon Macs are gonna be as great as people say they are, what you're worried about with them or what you're really excited about. And once again, I upload new videos just like these every week, Monday through Friday. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and click that bell and you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.